It's what if Wednesday and we're dancing over here. We're excited. <laughs> what is up, Sean? Three uh, rings we got on my so finger much. and it's never enough. That's what? That's Mission by Moon Taxi. Kind of our official song. Our official what if band Moon Taxi. We love them. It's not inked on paper, so don't quote us. But Moon Taxi, we love you. All right, let's dive in. So enough, enough fun for this Wednesday morning. Uh, we got a lot to talk about and we got a short time to do it. We are coming off a week of the inner circle last Wednesday, where we had a lot of ahas. Uh, no tears last week, which was good, but we had a lot of eye-opening moments about setting your five-year vision which a lot of people put off and they don't do, or they just, they put some pretty words on paper, but no, we broke that down into action steps that we can do for our first 12 week sprint. That's coming up starting January 1st. So we gave a uh, basically 35 day grace period to say, let's get our ducks in a row and let's kick off the new year running. So today the promise of this episode is we're going to give you one thing your customer service team needs to do ASAP and we're going to get there. But I want to talk about, like I said, last week on the Inner Circle, the first 12-week sprint we have coming up at the first of the year. And we have a special event happening next week, Sean. Do you want to drop some hints around what that may be? And I'll put it up on the screen. I would love to. You distracted me, though, when you said getting our ducks in a row, because then I started thinking, yeah, wow, how would you do that? Why, first, why would you need, if you had ducks, why would you need them in a row? But secondly, how would you do that? And I don't think you really get ducks in a row. I think they naturally, they, they actually line up. Naturally. And I think that's important because <laughs> you're, you, we didn't obviously plan on talking about this, but, but wait, so as a, as a duck, to be a duck in a row, all you need is the mother duck to start <laughs> walking and the baby ducklings follow. They follow naturally, so, naturally. There is a natural order to the universe. That's the harmonious architecture. That's inspire <laughs> and home working in a line. It's incredible how it applies everywhere. And we're just realizing <laughs> this now. Yes, because what do we say? People think that we as fractional CLOs, as coaches, as consultants, as all, all the disruptors, that what we do is that we're bringing order to the chaos. I don't think life is chaos. I think there is order. I think the clients we work with bring chaos to the order. And most of what we do, we do less telling people what they should be doing. And we spend more time telling them what they shouldn't be doing. And so, because they're bringing chaos to the order. So your ducks will line up <laughs> if you just do things in the right order and you get that lead duck, you know how to navigate and then inspire and we're off to the races. So, wonderful about the ducks. So let's plant some seeds for things that we hope will grow. So this is part of my, my favorite time of the year. Even though on Monday I woke up and said, oh my crap, Thursday is Thanksgiving. How did this happen? What are we doing? Short week, what? Half day for the kids on Wednesday? I don't, we're not ready for this. Kids are already, let's talk lists. Let's not talk Christmas. What are we doing? Okay. Even though all that's happening, it is a great time of year because a lot of business will slow down, meaning customer interactions as they go off into the world and work on their own things and have holidays that they go to and all this kind of stuff. In corporate America, not a whole lot of stuff happens around this time. There's holiday parties. There's that kind of stuff. And they kind of, because the press to get stuff done happened like before this time that panic at the end of October. Oh my God, it's almost the end of the year and we, uh, we've achieved none of our objectives. And then they peter out into the end of the year and then they come in January 5th, suddenly the fog of holidays is lifted from their eyes. They're bringing the Christmas tree to the dump. They're, they're unwinding and now they go, man, I got to start thinking about this year. And then they start thinking about stuff now they're, and their calendar is already loaded with leftover junk they never cleaned out from last year just like they got they got all this holiday poundage on they got all this poundage from their last prior year on their calendars and now it's hard to get to the gym and start working on these big bold plans that we're coming up with now feeling the pain of whatever we just caused ourselves to be as opposed to 
taking this time to reflect, renew. If you're on a 12 week year schedule, every 12 weeks is a new year with another week to digest what happened, plan for the next sprint. If you're not on that kind of schedule, it's overwhelming. But if you are, this is what I love about the people in the mastermind right now doing this step with us right now as um, we've already done the mission, vision, core values, all that kind of work ahead of time. We've chunked down our five-year vision into one year, into uh, first quarter, into the sprint. And we're talking now about the three things they're going to do and how those become their projects and how they manage that right now, which is fantastic because they need to do that before January 2nd. Long before. And, and if they haven't, and if now you're going, well, yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to do that planning, I'm going to do that planning, but you haven't done those first steps to outline what your navigation is, what's that North Star, what are, what are your mission, vision, and core values in a way that is fully leveraged through or prepared to be throughout the rest of your business, then you're not really going to be prepared to cut away the stuff that you don't need to be doing and pack your calendar with the most leverageable, accelerating fuels to your business with your objective plainly in sight. You're not gonna have that clarity, that focus, and then you're stumbling into the new year. So is that a hint or is that the full thing? What, if, if I, that, I that, was, that was a good way to dance around the whole thing. So let's, let's disrupt it. a little bit. That's what we do here. We disrupt the way you think about your business so that you can get to that next level and grow. So strategic planning is stupid. That's my opinion. For small businesses, strategic planning is stupid because the, the model that we have is going off of these big businesses where they set revenue projections and expense targets and all these different things that they may have or they do have real data to back up those numbers. And they can hit it with, you've been inside the walls more than I have, probably like 98% accuracy. Small business owners, we just put out hopes and dreams and we don't actually know you know, can we 2X our revenue? Can we 10X our revenue? There's a little name drop for you that we don't like all that much. But that that's what we tend to do is these poor targets and call it strategic planning. So what do we do? We skip it entirely. And that is what I have on the screen here. We have a solution to that. We have found a way. Sean has identified the navigation discipline in the harmonious architecture. And we're going to spend five days on it. We're going to spend live on camera it's interactive with you to go through your business and say okay what is the navigation what is the north star we're marching towards how are we going to get there and how do we make sure that the foundation or the core of our business is solid so that we can be the mother duck for our employees we can march in the right direction and make sure we go find the food in that scenario or the water whatever we're chasing we can go find it i'm so glad i was able to find a way to tie this back to ducks you're but gonna have a, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have a mother duck and plan like, you're gonna have a mother <laughs> duck and plan by january 2nd and here's and yes and now you mentioned how big you know corporate america does it i yes i've been in those rooms i mean yeah, it's dialed in more because of reams of data and all that, and all that kind of stuff. But it is a really the process is terrible, and because they're struggling across silos and disciplines and and think of just how many people, how many layers of obfuscation and gamesmanship that's happening, all baked under this before something emerges. That's also driven by what the street wants to hear. You don't have those dynamics as as an entrepreneur so you can do it in a much more clear clean cut way a way that makes sense to everybody on your team makes sense to you and you can get there so much faster in in in, 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 in a fashion that will have you on a trajectory but is, you can also pivot from much faster much easier and in a much clean fashion when we get to into change management and all that other kind of stuff so Building this right is a massive part to, why did I, why I said, it's a massive part to, I don't know why, to getting this done. Um, right. And in a way that if it feels less stressful. Yeah. Cool. So, so here's, here's basically our promise for, if you spend five days with us and I don't know if I said this or not, but now we're five, now yes, five, five, days. five days, one hour a day. 
with us live. We're going to workshop this for you. It is called the Next Level Business Bootcamp. Go to whatif.com slash navigate. If you want to get to the next level in your business, this is the way to get there. And this is what we see over and over and over that no matter where you are, every business reaches a plateau. The time you spend at that plateau is 100% up to you as the leader of the business. This will shortcut the time at whatever plateau you're at right now and will provide the launch pad for your business in 2024. So we're going to streamline the foundation of your business. We're going to get that rock solid and give you the goals that will not give you. We're going to help you identify the goals that you're chasing next year. So if you want to sign up, if you want to spend time with us, uh, it's next week, starting the 27th uh, of this month. We're going to see you there and we want to get this rock solid for you. So enough about that. This is what makes time travel possible. This yes. is a flux capacitor. That Without is this, there are perfect. lots of ways to hit your goals. Lots of ways. We don't have the only way. Lots of ways. But if you don't do this step in whatever path you take, it takes way longer, is way harder, way more of a drain. So just do this. It's the only way. Time is a constant. So the only way to get there is to accelerate your journey through it by reducing the friction that will hold you back and, and cause resistance on that journey. It's the only way that time travel is really possible. So this is how that is possible. That is right. Now, you talk about friction. Let's deliver on the promise of today. Friction, customer service is often a friction point in business. Tell me, what was the last amazing experience you had with Walmart customer service? <laughs> Help me on the, I don't, I love Walmart and everything they do. Why are you, this is live. What are you doing? That's okay. I'm going to pick on them a little bit. Um, there are some companies. No, Brandon. <laughs> um, I, what, with what, with a company that, so here's the problem with, most customer service right, is that they are the, um, well, I'll tell you, you were supposed to say something first and I was supposed to have an opinion. I was, I was getting there. Service, <laughs> most customer service is the dumping ground for poor performance. It's not really, can you help me have a better, gosh, I love you so much. I just want to talk to you about ways that I can get more of your product or service. That's not happening. Customer service is how we resolve frontline problems and shut you up. It's like that thing that we go, oh, if we're going to be in business, we got to have some kind of customer service again, right? Because these people are going to call, oh, business is so difficult when you put customers in the in the mix, right? Because they think they're always right and they always have something to say. So that is, that is, I think, traditionally how people see customer service. I don't think that's what it should be. But Brandon, you brought it up. What do you think it should be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I was picking on Walmart a little bit, but really I'm picking on, like you said, uh, most businesses, because most businesses think of customer service as the after the fact, let's just hope we don't hear from these people anymore and, and get them, get them out of here as soon as possible. Right. Yeah. Um, I always compare customer service to a terrorist hostage negotiation. That to me is the way that I always have thought about customer service, because if you're dealing with a customer in that scenario, they're most likely angry at you or your company, and you need to diffuse the situation and get them off the ledge. So there's two ways to think about customer service. There is service and there's experience. One's reactive, one's proactive. So my, my ask here, my disruptor, if you will, is that we design a process because I, the promise for the episode was customer service in the order discipline. So what is the process behind customer service that you can optimize immediately? And yes, I'm going to give you one. Uh, but what is one thing you could do to your customer service immediately so it's proactive and it actually increases the customer satisfaction when they deal with your, your company and makes them want to come back and do business with you more so that you don't have to sit on a live stream and ask Sean how much he hates Walmart customer service. So which I don't, there. which I don't, I know I do, <laughs> I, but we're going to put, <laughs> I put you on the spot, but let's be real. There's not a whole lot of positive customer service interactions at any company. It's, it doesn't have to be Walmart, but 
because they're missing this one this one step. <laughs> and it's not going to be. They're terrific. Okay. So please, but what you should you should think about everyone. The, the, so the first thing is think about this. Customer service is not a necessary evil that you hope no one will come to. You hope you don't have angry customers who need a channel to come to you, right? But customer service, start thinking about it as your vehicle. It is another interaction with your uh, customers to ask them how you can serve them better. And feedback that comes in positive, negative, whatever it is, is gold. If your mission is to create raving fans, which it should be, if you're truly trying to serve your community, you want to serve them so well that they adore you. That should be your mission. I, I, yeah, well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to call, solve their problem. Yes, lots. There are probably lots of people. If their problem is big enough, lots of people are trying to solve their problem. And you, sure, you could do it cheaper. That's a race to the bottom. Or you could just do it better. Do it in such a way that they truly feel heard, seen, understood, supported, loved, and solved in the most complete fashion at a price that took their concerns into and their station, whatever you're trying to sell for them, in, into account. And they will love you, poor loving you, but you're going to have bumps and those bumps are going to cause people to come to you and those people are not problems to be dealt with. Yes, there are examples. I can give you lots of examples of people who are just problems to be dealt with. And then you need to understand that that person is not your avatar and that they should be sent to the restaurant down the street instead of yours. Right? Why would you send them out of there without how to hear without making them happy? They're just gonna go to the competition. I hope so. That guy comes in here two nights a week, orders the, the steak on the hot plate. We tell him that hot plate is 500 degrees, it's still cooking. He eats three quarters of it and then says, My steak's overcooked, take it back. He left it on the hot plate, sizzling. We warned him to do it. He eats almost the whole thing, gets a second free steak, gobbles that down, and then says it was trash. I don't want him back here. He's not getting free drinks. I told, I gave him the number of the street of the restaurant down the street. <laughs> he said, "You'll never." I'll tell everyone I know. Please, could I give you a marketing budget? I want you to tell everyone you know that we don't put up with this BS here in this restaurant. That is a real example. Yes, that can happen. All right, his customer complaint was heard and understood in the light for which it was delivered and hit the bricks. But most people are giving you incredibly valuable feedback that you would pay someone to give you. They're calling you for nothing to say, here's how you suck. And here's how you could be better. But if you approach that conversation in the right way, it is a treasure trove. I agree. Yes. So let's, let's make this actionable. So customer service traditionally is one of the lower paying jobs within an organization. Like you said, they kind of, toss the the people with poor performance in there among other things and it's it's a neglected area that we just hope resolves itself and these people the customers go away and and you know the problems go away too let's be proactive let's make it customer experience and you could do this you don't have to increase wages you just have to shift mindset i encourage you to increase wages and make this a proactive part of your company and make it another positive touch with the customers but Sean, I'm curious if you've ever heard this, is a method that has served me very well over the last five years. Um, actually, I heard it about, about five years ago at this point, and that is the TAR method, T-A-R. And it applies to customer service and customer experience. And it goes, thank, acknowledge, resolve. If you follow that simple formula in your customer service interactions, I promise you the level of dissatisfied customers will drop drastically. So what that looks like is when someone comes to you and says, Hey, Sean, I hate you. Your company sucks. Here's what happens. You cut my lawn and it's brown now. And I don't know why you have a landscaping business all of a sudden, but it's, I'm, I'm really glad you do. So instead of saying immediately, what's the natural reaction, especially on someone who's, who's not trained to do this is defensive, right? Sure. So what we do is we we go back, not not we, but naturally you go Actually, back. I, the, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So naturally you're defensive, but that's what you hear as the customer service rep. You hear this person yelling at me, and they're you're experiencing this all day long if they're in that position. So it's defensive. It's guard is up. 
How do I diffuse this situation and make it not my fault? That's human nature. So let's flip that around and thank them for raising this concern. Thank you for coming to me with this problem so that we have the opportunity to fix it. Right there, you've neutralized any potential threat, if you will. Um, and then you acknowledge that what they're saying is a real problem. I hear that you have a brown lawn and I want to get to the bottom of this and fix it. And then you can you have the opportunity to resolve it. If you follow those two first steps, I have found from experience that the options for R for resolving the problem multiply exponentially. If you go at it trying to be defensive, it is a head-to-head -head combat, the entire conversation. And it's only when the customer feels like they win, that way they will de-escalate the conversation. If you start by thanking and acknowledging, you've opened the door to so many other options to resolve that problem in a way that's favorable to both you as the company and to them as the customer. So because, it has because sure. your core values and because your core values started there, we yes. love these people. We're serving these people. We failed to serve this one. How can I resolve that? That does. And, and yes, if you go in with that way and your people should go into that way, because in the leadership, when we talk about leadership or inspiration, we talk about total ownership protocols, being a top leader in your organization. It's all, it all is ownership of everything. And, and so that trickles down to your frontline employees. And so they will take ownership of this problem as if they themselves had done it and should, and ownership of the resolution, right? If they go, well, why should I care? I didn't do it. It was Gary in shipping. He screws up a lot of stuff. He's why I get all these calls, right? Hey, I hear you customer. Gary's a real piece of work. It's not my problem. You know, doesn't matter where the problem originated. I am taking total ownership of the resolution for you, customer. That's all they want to hear. You're a real person. You're not phone jack operator 127 logging something in and you'll never hear from me again. It is literally, I'm Sean. I'm going to solve this for you, right? We're going to get somewhere where it's okay. Where it's okay, right? Right. You have to distill them back to a state of neutral as well. Not defensive, not hot under the collar, not with an axe to grind, and you're not hearing them, and this is going to be contentious. That's the yeah. disruptor for them then, that I hear you. That sounds like it's bad. You wanted us to cut your grass, and well, we cut it. It's just now dead, and let's find out why that is and how we can be a part of making sure that's not the case because it's not what you wanted, and that's not what we wanted for you. Exactly. So that's the disruptor for today. Let's think about the process around your customer service. Let's optimize that. There's a quick tip, TAR method. See if you can work with that. But of course, make sure it's in your core values first. Come join us, whatif.com slash navigate. We'll see you next week. We got to go to the inner circle because we have people to help grow their businesses. So we're going to go do that. And we'll see you next week on the inner circle preview show on Wednesday. Sean, we are signing off. Adios.